In our last video about human population, I described the story of the age distribution and I provided uh, and I described the two extremes of the developing world and then other countries in the developed world. And the classic shape here in the developing world, if this is the age bands um, along uh, these, each of these stripes is the age bands. So these are the childhood and then uh, working age and then uh, old age. Again, we can see the same thing here as well. But there's a big difference in the shape. In the developing world, we see that there's a large number of children and there's a high birth rate. They're really the two key things. We've got a high birth rate and a large number of children. In our developed world, we've got a, um, a lower birth rate. And we've got an aging population because this, the swelling here is the baby boomers and they're moving now towards our old age and leaving the workforce. The concern here is that we've got an aging population so we don't have many young people moving up into the workforce to support the elderly. In this video what I want to do is talk to you about the, the circumstances and the pressures that allow these two trends to come about. Let's firstly consider the developing world and the factors that are relevant in the developing world for having a large and high birth rate. Firstly, we've got a higher infant mortality. That means not every child that's born is going to move to adulthood. So for that reason, families have more children. They have more children to compensate for the ones that won't progress to adulthood. As well as that, families have a large number of children because they can work on the farm or work in the family business. So families tend to have more children so they've got extra free workers to work in their business. There's also um, some cultural issues as well. Uh, in many of these countries, it's the, the female role is to have children and to be a mother. So that's a, the, 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 the women in many of these countries are less educated and they don't have those same employment opportunities. So they start having children earlier or younger, I should say. And another thing is that there's often not the same access to contraception. So there's a whole series of different reasons why there's a high birth rate in developing countries. Now let's talk about the developed world. What are the factors there? Well, first of all, it's expensive to have children. So instead of seeing children as a resource that can help out on the farm, it's actually expensive to, um, for childcare, and education and all of the things that children want to do outside of school etc so children are expensive it's one of the reasons why in the developed world uh, families have less children another is that the women um, delay starting a family they start having children later due to education and career they see it's uh, that they want to have a, a career before they have children so subsequently they may not start having children until their late 30s and clearly you can't have as many children if you start that late. Some final factors, there's um, a, a lower infant mortality so therefore these families don't have to have these reserved children or spares. And last thing, the availability of contraception. So you can see that there's different factors in different parts of the world that lead to differences in the age distribution of the population. So if you're considering what can be done to um, modify these trends in the developing world, um, it's about education and the provision of contraception. It's about improved, so we might actually write these down, what can to do? Well, what can be done? Okay, so in, uh, contraception. 
So that's the availability and also education about contraception. It's about improved health care so that you don't have as high an infant mortality rate. Um, it's about better education opportunities for women. Education and employment opportunities. And so that'll delay them staying to have children. They won't have as many children because I have contraception available. They won't have to have as many children because they're, they're not dying. Um, and, and, and of course, this thing about children helping on the farm, well, there's a large push in the developing countries from people to move to cities. So it's no longer as relevant for the children to be, to have as many children to look after the farm. What can happen in the developed world, because we've got this issue of not having enough children being born to, uh, to support the elderly. We've got an aging population. So what do we need to do? Well, many of these countries are encouraging people to have more children. So it's about incentives to encourage more children. Encourage families to have more children. And that might be financial incentives. Because we mentioned that uh, it's expensive to, to raise children with education and childcare, etc. So many countries, including Australia, have um, uh, uh, a baby bonus. Uh, so financial incentives. Um, and, and also it's about allowing um, uh, parents to, to rejo rejoin the workforce. Um, so flexible work arrangements, um, maternity leave, etc. So uh, encouraging uh, parents to, to, to understand that they can still have a career and have a family. So flexible working arrangements. Now and the last one that's really important is staying in the workforce longer. So delayed retirement. And of course there's an opportunity for immigration as well. So there's loads of things that can be done to look at stabilising um, the population growth and the age distribution in different parts of the world.